Hi, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. And um, today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of heart attacks and how um, you can go about um, uh, leading a life uh, which uh, by its very virtue reduces your risk of having a heart attack. Okay. Um, so the first thing to say is heart attacks are extremely common. We are seeing that the prevalence of heart attacks is going up, okay, by the day. Um, I'm sure that anyone who's watching this video will know of someone close to them who may have had a heart attack. Um, and we are also seeing that heart attacks are beginning to affect younger patients than ever before. And there are two types of patients with heart attacks, okay? And um, there are those people who have a heart attack, they come into a hospital and they get treated. And we are undoubtedly getting better at treating heart attacks uh, because we now have stents um, available which can be implanted very quickly and the heart attack can be aborted. Uh, but there is another kind of patient who has a sudden heart attack at home and never has the time to make it to hospital. And we're really, despite all our advances in medicine, we are not really doing anything to reduce mortality in those people. So if you are someone who is lucky enough to have the time to make it to hospital, um, chances are that the treatment will help in prolonging your life from that heart attack. Uh, but uh, if you are unlucky enough to have the heart attack and not make it to hospital, uh, then the, nothing at the moment has made any impact to the number of people who die of sudden unheralded heart attacks at home. And that got me thinking about heart attacks, and I wanted to try and do this video and explore some of the reasons why heart attacks happen and how you can go about um, uh, trying to uh, minimize your chances from suffering from a heart attack. Okay, So the uh, first thing to say is that a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of research uh, and money and everything else is spent on trying to find treatments, okay? Treatments for heart attacks. What do you do? How do you uh, treat a heart attack? Uh, and very little emphasis is placed on how you prevent one from happening in the first place because uh, surely uh, the secret has to be to try and avoid them happening in the first place. Um, and when you get down to the nitty-gritty, uh, there are four things that cause you to have heart attacks, okay? Uh, number one, age. As you get older, you are more likely to have heart attacks. That is just part and parcel of the aging process, and no one can do anything about it. Um, a person who is 95 is more likely to have a heart attack than a person who's 25 because of wear and tear and general aging. And the truth is, when a person gets to 95, he accepts that, he understands that there is some, there's going to be some mechanism by which his life will end, and a heart attack is not something that scares him excessively at that age. Uh, then there is genetics, okay? If you have bad genetics, then you are more likely to have heart attacks. And if you have bad genetics, you are more likely to have heart attacks at a younger age. And again, there's very little you can do about that. That is just that. Uh, number three, luck. Okay, uh, there is undoubtedly um, a component of luck. You know, you can have, you can do all things right and still have a heart attack, and that is just bad luck. And you can't do anything about that either. And then there's a fourth aspect which you can do tons about, and that is your lifestyle. Okay, and um, Changing your lifestyle can make a substantial difference to your risks of having a heart attack in the future. It's worth noting that whilst lifestyle on its own can cause um, heart attacks, uh, many of the other, uh, the other four, the other three, so, you, you know, um, age and uh, genetics and luck, uh, usually it has to be a combination. So you can have bad genetics and then also have a bad lifestyle and that could that would cause um, uh, a heart attack to happen. It's very rare just to have someone who's doing absolutely everything right and still has heart attacks, but it does happen. Uh, 
Um, so basically what I'm saying is that the only thing you can really try and target is your lifestyle. And so there are various components of one's lifestyle that we should look at to see, well, how can you know, specific aspects of lifestyle uh, affect uh, your heart um, in the future? So um, when you ask a population of uh, people, you know, what do you understand by a good lifestyle? Most people will say exercise and, you know, eating healthy food. But there are lots of other often neglected aspects of lifestyle, which I want to talk to you about today. So number one, there are certain things that we're putting inside us which increase our risks of having heart attacks and increase our risks of having sudden heart attacks and first and foremost smoking okay if you are smoking you are um, uh, subjecting your body and your heart to a horrible horrible inflammatory hit okay with every cigarette you smoke you are causing inflammation within your body and not only does the buildup of tar around the heart arteries uh, cause narrowing of the heart arteries but it can also increase your risk of having sudden unheralded heart attacks and sudden death and therefore uh, i don't buy the argument that oh i only smoke 10 cigarettes a day when you are smoking even one cigarette you are providing your body with a, a big hit you are hit it's a huge inflammatory hit and therefore i would strongly advise to stay away from cigarettes uh, number two um, Increasingly, we see the prevalence of drug abuse and cocaine in particular, uh, and this is one of the uh, very common reasons uh, for younger people to be having heart attacks. So things like cocaine, they cause spasms, uh, they're very, they cause the blood vessels to go into spasm, and they can be extremely dangerous. So that's another thing. And these are easy things because these are things um, you have great control over, you know, um, you are actually taking something from outside, putting it, something harmful and putting it inside your body. So I strongly recommend things like smoking and cocaine and drug abuse are very, very bad for the heart and are uh, by far and common, by far and away, the, some of the most important reasons why people have heart attacks. Then the next thing to talk about is diet, okay? we all are probably eating much more than we need to for our bodies um obesity is a huge problem you know literally um, if you look around you you'll see the prevalence of obesity um, and our bodies were not really designed to be this big so uh, and particular people who are chunkly obese so if you have if you're carrying extra weight around your abdomen if your um, uh, waist is wider than your hips uh, then that's a bad sign uh, and it suggests that you're eating too much and you need to reduce your weight okay um, but also it's about the quality of nutrition we take in uh, a lot of food that we're taking in at the moment is subject to a lot of processing there's a lot of additives compromises are made in every stage of food production these days so the food is produced in an area in a small area um, the food is uh, you know the ground is put uh, lots of uh, fertilizers and chemicals are put in to grow that food the food is then uh, put in the supermarkets and preserved to try and keep it looking um, uh, fresher for longer uh, when it's prepared lots of additives are added in and then eventually you buy that food and you eat it and you may think oh well this is healthy food because i haven't gone to mcdonald's but actually it's important to be aware that a lot of compromises are made before that food ends up on your dinner table and it's very important to be conscious of that you know reducing how much you take in and also trying to work out where your food is coming from and has it been produced in a in in a in a in a healthy manner most of the food we eat is not catered for our health it's catered for our the visual appeal of the food and for, to our tastes rather than our health and so it's really important to bear that in mind and i would always recommend that if you can eat fresh food if you can eat food that you know has come from a local grower rather than you know some of these big companies that is better for you and also cutting down the amount of food can play a huge role Okay, people talk about cholesterol. Yes, sure, but far by far the bigger problem is, um, you know, the 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 quality of food that we're getting, and the compromises we make. 
number three, um, carbonated drinks, a huge problem these days. You know, the sugar hit with carbonated drinks is enormous and they are incredibly inflammatory to our bodies. And um, we drink them and we think they're harmless, but actually every time we're drinking one, it's a huge hit. It's, it, it completely destroys the equilibrium within the body. Uh, we don't notice it now, but I'm sure that these things build up over time and they do impact on our health in different ways. So that's something else, you know, what's wrong with fresh, clean water? Uh, far better than any kind of carbonated drink. Uh, and that's something that you can certainly do something about. Excessive alcohol as well. A lot of people talk about the fact that a little bit of alcohol is good for the heart. Sure, it relaxes you. It opens up the blood vessels, yes. But anything excessive is undoubtedly harmful for the heart. It can it cause heart rhythm disturbances. It is toxic to the heart. People who drink a lot of um, uh, alcohol can develop a cardiomyopathy, a heart -related, uh, heart uh, alcohol-related heart failure. Uh, and that is horrible. So I would strongly recommend that you curtail that if you can. Then there is the exercise aspect. And exercise is huge. Exercise is generally very, very, very good. It is an anti-inflammatory. Uh, so doing moderate exercise um, reduces our body's inflammation levels. If you have heart artery narrowings, it stabilizes those heart artery narrowings. And... Um, a lot of times when people have sudden heart attacks, it's because a bit of plaque, which is in the heart artery, breaks off and the body thinks, oh, there's a wound and forms a blood clot there and then, which blocks off the artery and that causes the heart attack. So anything that can stabilize or reduce the risk of these plaques breaking off is a good thing. And exercise is very definitely one of those things that has a plaque stabilization role. Okay. Um, then... Um, there is the aspects that have often been neglected. Sleep. Very few people talk about sleep and the quality of sleep. You know, it is incredibly important for the body to have enough sleep. We are all compromising on our sleep now because of the lifestyle we lead. There is so much stress. We wake up early. We go to sleep late. We try and fit in so much during the day. And we don't necessarily sleep well. And it is incredibly important to give that body the rest and the heart, the rest that it deserves. Remember, absence of sleep increases your stress hormones. Increasing your stress hormones causes high blood pressure and diabetes and weight gain. And um, all those then work together to causing heart artery narrowings, plaques within the heart arteries, and they all increase your risk of sudden death. And lack of sleep can increase your risk of sudden death too. So I think it's really, really important um, the quality of sleep is really important. Some people who are particularly overweight uh, develop a condition called sleep apnea. And you wouldn't believe it, but one in five people now, one in five people in the population in the Western world have sleep apnea. And what sleep apnea means is that you're not sleeping uh, well, your stress hormones never go down, and therefore all night your stress hormones, which are meant to rest, never go down. And that is why people then develop high blood pressure and diabetes. So if you are a very heavy snorer, if you are finding that you're carrying extra weight and you're tired during the day, that might be it. And treating the sleep apnea will reduce your risks of developing heart disease in the future. So it's, again, worth bearing that in mind. Another thing that a lot of people don't talk about is stress. Stress is huge. Everyone is stressed. Everywhere I look, people are stressed. Um, and you can stress is hugely inflammatory to the body. And it's really important, again, to, to be cognizant of the fact that we are stressed. It is important to realize that actually, you know, is this stress good for my body? We think we can take it. We think we're immortal. And then something like this happens. And then suddenly we realize, oh, my God, you know, why did I have a heart attack? Well, we're pushing our bodies too hard. We're pushing our bodies to do things that they weren't designed to do. So let's cut out the stress. Let's reduce the stress. Let's be cognizant. Let's try and take holidays so that we can reduce the amount of stress that we put in. Let's realize that actually it's not about mo making money. It's about having a good quality of our life. And the quality of our lives is dictated by our overall health. A few other things. Um, anger and depression both have been shown to increase your risk of heart disease. And increasingly, everywhere I look, people are depressed. There is so much stress and anger around. 
And there have been studies which have shown that if you are excessively stressed, if you're angry, if you have depression, then these things um, increase your risk of um, uh, heart attacks and sudden heart attacks. And therefore, it is really important to pay attention to these things and stop them becoming a recurring thing in your life's um, lives. Um, so, uh, and the, other, the final thing I would say is that it's always important to go and see your GP and get a cholesterol measured because we know that people has, can have a condition called hypercholesterolemia, a genetic predisposition to having high cholesterol. And if that is the case, then it is really important to um, get your cholesterol treated at an early stage uh, because if you get it treated, then the heart arteries will not fur up um, at this, uh, you know, um, over a long course of time. And if you do have familiar hypercholesterolemia, then I would strongly recommend that you get your children screened as well to ensure that they have not inherited that from you. And if they have, then it's important to treat their cholesterol at an early stage. But those are a few of the things that I think are really, really important um, in terms of um, reducing your risks of heart attack. Other than that, it's really, really important to bear in mind that the true wealth we have as human beings is our health, okay, and the health of our loved ones. And those are the things that matter. So uh, I hope you found this useful. Um, I've had a lot of people contact me and say, well, you know, can, can I come and see you? And sure, you can. Um, you can get in touch with me through my website, yorkcardiology.co.uk. Um, my sec my long-suffering secretary, Jeanette, is on 725811 in York, uh, and you can always make contact with her if you want to come and see me. Uh, I'm also on Twitter and on Facebook. So thank you once again for listening. I wish you all the well. I wish you well. I wish you well. And um, I look forward to chatting to you soon. Bye.